Hi everyone! Today we are going to be talking about the slope of a line. And before we begin our lesson, please make sure that you have printed off the corresponding lesson that goes with this video. Or if you aren't able to print off the handout, then uh, please get a line piece of paper and draw a couple of Cartesian grids on it so you can follow along. So, uh, but in order for us to visualize the slope, the easiest way to think about it is if you consider something like a hill or a mountain. Now, if you are a little kid and you're standing on this hill and you're looking up, this is sort of what you're going to see. Whereas if you're the same little kid and you're looking up at a mountain, this is the type of line you're going to see. And basically, when we talk about the slope of a line, we are talking about how steep it is or how quickly is it increasing or decreasing. And over the next couple of lessons, we are going to be talking about the slope in a variety of ways. We're going to be looking at it in a graph. We're going to talk about how to calculate it algebraically. Um, and we're going to continue on with this topic. So we're going to begin our topic of the slope of a line by reviewing a concept that you've probably learned in middle school. And the idea that you were taught then is when you're talking about the slope of a line, you can calculate the numerical value, the number value of the slope by considering the rise over the run. And if that doesn't sound familiar to you, I am going to go through this example so you can um, see if you remember it. So it says find the slope of the line that passes through the point A, 2 comma 1 and b 5 comma 7 by finding the rise over the run. As soon as I see two points, my first uh, instinct is to go ahead and graph those points. So 2 comma 1 and this is this goes back to the lesson that you had last week on how to graph on a Cartesian cord, uh, grid. So that's 2 comma 1 and 5 comma 7 is going to be around there. And then uh, hopefully you have a ruler with you. You're going to take your ruler and you are going to connect those two points together. So now if we're talking about the rise between these two points, what we're actually looking at is the difference in their height. So along the y axis. So our rise is going to go from here all the way to here. That represents our rise. And our run is basically the horizontal uh, distance between the two points. So our run is going to go from here to here. And that's our run. And now we can actually count the number of points that are units that are going up and across. So rise over run. So from here, we're starting at 1. And my line isn't very accurate. Hopefully um, yours is a little better. So we're starting at 1 and we're going all the way to 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means our rise is going to be 6 units. And our run, we're starting over at 2 and we're going all the way to the number 5. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. Our run is going to be equal to 3. So if we were to calculate the slope of this using our rise over run and putting it into our formula, our rise is 6, our run is 3, so the slope of this line is going to be 2 units. In the previous example, you saw that we calculated the rise and the run very easily because the numbers that we were given were nice whole numbers. But realistically, that's not always going to be the case. We can have messy fractions, we can have decimals. We need to find a more efficient way of calculating the slope that works every single time. And the way that we're going to use is an algebraic method. So we're going to try to come up with some sort of formula that we can apply every single time to calculate the slope. So in this example, I have my x, y, grid. And I'm going to have a random point over here that I don't know the numbers to. I'm just going to call it x1 and y1. So this point is going to be x1 and this point is going to be y1. I'm going to do that again with a second point. So again, a random second point. I don't know what the numbers are. So I'm going to call them x2 and y2. And using this information, that's a y2. Using this information, we are going to try and come up with some sort of formula that we can use for slope all the time. So now let's imagine I connect these two points, x1, y1, and x2 and y2, and I use the same method that I did in the previous example. So my rise is going to go 
from the two points. So this number, or this line right here, represents our rise, and our run is going to be this horizontal line. Now, in this example, I haven't given you any numbers, but that doesn't mean we can't come up with um, a method to figure out what the rise is. So let's look at our rise. We begin at y1, and we go all the way up to y2. What is the difference or the distance between these two points? That can be represented by su just subtracting them. So taking y2 and subtracting y1, that would give us the distance between y2 and y1. We can do the exact same thing for run. So we're beginning at x1 and we're going all the way to x2. So to figure out the, dif the distance between these two points, we're just going to be subtracting them. We're going to take x2, subtract x1. Now if we take all of that information and put it into a formula, this is what it's going to look like. m represents the slope. The top numbers are actually our rise. So what we're doing is, and this is going to get a little messy, so follow along, rise is going to go up here, because that's where it is in our formula, rise over run. And the run, which is this, is going to go all the way over here. So our ultimate formula is going to be m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now that we have developed a formula to calculating the slope, we are going to practice using that formula for the next couple of questions. So question number two says, find the slope of the line that passes through the point 2 comma 1 and 6 comma 9. Let's begin by first looking at those two points. So I have 2 comma 1 and I have 6 comma 9. Before I even begin to calculate my question, I want to label these two points. I'm going to call one of them x1 and y1, and I'm going to call the second point x2 and y2. And you just want to be consistent. You always want to label the first number in your coordinate, the x, and the second number, the y, and then you want to call one pair of them the ones and the second pair of them the twos. Whenever we're calculating the slope, we always want to begin with the formula. So I'm going to write down the formula that you see at the top over here. m, which represents the slope, is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And now it's just a matter of us substituting these values into this formula. So y2 is 9 minus y1 is 1, divided by x2 is 6, minus x1 is 2. Let's do the calculation. 9 take away 1 is 8, 6 take away 2 is 4, and that is going to give us a slope of 2. Now just for fun, let's try and see if this answer is right. We have a way to check this, and that's by going back to our old method of rise over run. So if you have this printed off, you're going to notice I've given you a grid in order for us to do what we did in the very beginning. So 2 comma 1 is our point right here, 6 comma 9 is our point right there, and you are going to connect those two points with a ruler. And now we're going to figure out the rise and the run. So my rise, I'm just going to count the units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So from here to here, it is 8 units. And my run is 1, 2, 3, 4. So my run is 4. And very quickly, rise over one, run would be 8 divided by 4, which is going to be equal to 2. And that means the slope that we calculated using the formula is correct. All right, moving on to our next example. Find the slope of the line that passes through the point negative 5 comma 4 and 3 comma negative 1. So we want to begin by writing down those two points on the side of our sheet, negative 5 comma 4 and 3 comma negative 1. So I know my first 
numbers are always your X's and your second numbers are always your Y's. And it doesn't matter which ones you label one and which one you label two, as long as you're consistent. So I generally take the first one and I call that my one. So X1 and Y1, and then these would be X2 and Y2. And once you do this labeling exercise, solving the actual question becomes a lot easier because uh, now, it, you know, it's just a matter of plugging in the values. So always begin by writing down the formula. M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so what do we have? Y2 is negative 1 minus Y1 is 4 x2 is 3 minus, and x1, you have to be careful, is a negative 5. So I'm going to include that in brackets, and I have to be mindful of these two double negative signs when I'm doing my calculation. Negative 1 minus 4. Same signs, add the numbers and keep the sign, so we're going to get negative 5. And this bottom denominator, 3 minus negative 5, when we clean up the signs, it's actually going to become 3 plus 5. So our final answer is going to be, slope is going to be equal to negative 5 over 8. So let's go ahead and prove that this is true by drawing it out and figuring out the rise over run. Negative 5 comma 4 is a point right here. 3 comma negative 1 is my point over here. I'm going to draw a line. Okay, and then once you've connected those two points, we are going to uh, go ahead and figure out the rise and the run. So again, the rise goes from top to bottom and the run goes horizontally. Uh, so I'm just going to count the units. One, two, three, four, five. My rise is five and my run is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The run is eight. Now, there's something interesting about this example and it is the negative slope. So in the example that we saw previously, you noticed that the line was going up. And when your line is going up, that has a positive slope. That number is always going to be plus. When your line is going down in this direction, that is going to be a negative slope. So um, technically, the slope over here would be negative 5 over 8 because it's a negative slope. And that confirms that our answer is correct. On to our next example, and hopefully by now you guys are getting the hang of it. So our first point is 1, 7, and I am going to call this point, or label it x1 and y1. And our second point is 9, 7, and we are going to label that x2 and y2. We start with our formula, which is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and let's plug in our values. So 7 take away 7 over 9 take away 1. And when we do this math, we end up with something very interesting. We get a slope of 0. Now what kind of lines have a 0 slope? In order for us to figure this out, we're going to have to graph our two points on our grid. 1, 7 is going to be right there and 9 comma 7 is going to be here and you can see that what we have right here is a horizontal line whenever you have a horizontal line that slope is always going to be a zero on to our very last example 3 comma 5 is our first point, x1 and y1. 3 comma negative 4 is our second point, x2, y2. Our formula is, always begin with m, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And 
go ahead and plug in the points. So y2 is negative 4 minus y1 is 5. x2 is 3 minus x1 is 3. And once again, we end up getting a weird answer. Anytime you end up with a denominator of 0, the answer is actually undefined. Okay, so why do we end up getting this weird answer? Okay, let's go ahead and graph these lines. So, sorry, graph these points. 3 comma 5, it's right there, and 3 comma negative 4 is right there. And what we have ended up with is a vertical line. Remember, whenever we're talking about the slope of a line, we're talking about the steepness of it. And so a vertical line has an undefined steepness, if that makes sense. So anytime you end up with an undefined slope, we are talking about a vertical line.